Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the new M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. I thought we'd unbox it, set it up and take a first look at it. Now it comes in silver or space gray and starts at $1299 and goes up to $2499, depending on your configuration. We flip this over here. As you can see, the configuration on this one is what was available. It's an eight gigabyte model as far as the RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. You can go from 256 to two terabytes for storage and eight gigabytes to 24 gigabytes of RAM. Typically I would get more, but it just wasn't available. Now, if we bring it in a little bit closer, the only way to tell that it's an M2 is that it says an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. So let's flip this over and go ahead and op open it up, unbox it, and take a look at it. So we'll undo the packaging here. Now, some of these are pushed out as far as August, depending on the configuration. So you may want to wait for the MacBook Air if you're waiting for that also, since that's in July. And let's go ahead and open this up. Now this does have a 16 core neural engine and hundred gigabytes, gigabytes a second memory bandwidth. Now here is the MacBook Pro itself. So we'll set this aside and I have an M1 over here to the side so we can compare that. But in the box, you've got your typical USB-C to USB-C cable for charging. And then we have some paperwork here. Let's see what we get in it. And we've got our typical startup or setup guide, an easy setup guide, and then some space gray stickers to go along with the space gray MacBook Pro. And inside we also get a power adapter and let's go ahead and open this up. There we go. And as you can see, it's a 67 watt power adapter. So your typical USB-C power adapter, the same one you would get in the M1 MacBook Pro. And as you can see, this looks very familiar. So it's space gray, of course. And then if we go around the outside edge, on the right hand side, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, nothing on the back or the front, but on the sides we have Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 ports. So just two of those. And just like the M1, you can only use it with one external display up to 6K at 60 Hertz. So that's its current limitation. You'll need one of the new MacBook Pros if you want more displays. One of the newer designed the M1 Max or M1 Pro MacBooks. Now, if we bring in the previous generation, you can see it looks pretty much the same. It's the same shade of space gray as well. And it's pretty much the exact same in every way, everything from its height to its depth to its weight. So it's three pounds or so. And depending on its configuration, it's about three pounds or 1.4 kilograms and the same thickness, width and height as we had before. So no difference there whatsoever. So if I put them side by side, you'll see it's hard to tell them apart. So they look exactly the same with the M1 versus the M2. So no difference there as far as anything else. Let me set the M1 aside. We'll compare some benchmarks a little bit later and let's go ahead and open this up and take a look. So we'll open it up here. It turns on immediately with the chime from Apple or the Mac chime. And you can see immediately after it turned on, it says hello. So we can go ahead and set this up. We'll just set it up quickly for this video. And Apple actually released a new version of Mac OS this week just for this particular device. So we'll go ahead and set this up. It recognized we're in the United States. We'll click continue. Then we have accessibility settings. I'll tap on not now or click not now. Then we need to set up our Wi-Fi. Then after that, we have to agree to the data and privacy policy. You can also click learn more. We'll click continue. And then we can migrate this from a Windows computer or from another Mac. I'm going to skip that for now. And then we put in our Apple ID. Once we sign in, we have to agree to the iCloud's terms and services. Next, we create a password to log into the computer. We'll click continue. I clicked through allowing find my Mac and now it says make this your new Mac. And then we can leave location services on or turn off any of these things. We'll go ahead and click continue and let it continue again. It went to dark mode. And now it wants me to set up touch ID. And you may have already noticed this still has the touch bar. It's still the only device that has the touch bar, but we do have the escape key in the upper left and touch ID in the right. So that's always nice to have. We'll set up touch ID quickly here. And it takes just a moment. And it's great having touch ID on a Mac or any device really that's not with face ID. 
And there we go. Touch ID is ready. We'll click continue. Now we can set up Apple pay. We'll just set that up later. Now we're on the home screen with all our apps. Of course, I'll need to install a few so we can check out some benchmarks in a moment. But if we go to the Apple in the upper left, go to about this Mac, you'll see that it actually shipped with version 12.4 of Mac OS Monterey. You'll see it says it's the 13 inch M2 2022 and has eight gigs of Ram. That's all that was available. Personally, I would go for probably 16 or 24, especially if you're going to edit video or anything like that, like I do. So let's talk about the display and then we'll run some benchmarks. Now you can see this display is the same as we had before. There's no notch in the display at all. And it's typical of what we had before with a 13.3 inch diagonal led backlit display. So it's 2560 by 1600 with 227 pixels per inch, and then goes up to five, 500 nits of brightness. So if we turn this all the way up, it's not a super bright display, but it should be bright enough for a laptop. It's as bright as any of the others. Of course, if you want the super bright ones, you'll need a 14 or 16 inch MacBook with the mini LED display. Now this does not have center stage or any of those new features with the webcam. It's just a 720p FaceTime camera and it doesn't have the studio mics like some of the newer devices do. So let's go ahead and test that out and then we'll run some benchmarks. So this is the FaceTime HD camera and you can hear the microphones from the MacBook Pro. And this gives you an idea of what you would look like and sound like maybe on a conference call or a zoom call or FaceTime call. So not quite as good as what we would have with a traditional camera or our iPhone that we'll be able to use on Mac OS Ventura and the microphones will do, but again, not as good as those newest studio mics that we have in the latest MacBook. So pretty decent, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Everything's set up on the MacBook Pro. You'll see I have the dock all set up and the keyboard is great. It's no longer that butterfly keyboard. Of course, we haven't had that for a while. And this is the last device with a touch bar on it. That's fairly subjective. I'm not a huge fan of the touch bar, but if you like it, it's here. And this is the only Mac available with it new. Now, also, I wanted to share what the speakers sound like in case you hadn't heard them. So we'll go into one of my videos here where I have a a comparison between all of the phones available in 2022 so far anyway until the iphone 14 is released let me go ahead and have you hear this and then we'll check out some benchmarks So that gives you an idea of what it sounds like. And we got up to 79 decibels using the noise app on the Apple watch. So it's pretty loud, not the loudest I've heard, but sounds decent compared to most MacBooks. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's go into the, the launch pad here where I've installed Geekbench and Blackmagic speed test for the disc speed test. Now this is only a 512 gigabyte model. So the speeds will vary depending on how much storage you have. And we're on the five gigabyte test. So we'll go to the one gigabyte test and hit start start and see what we get. So, so far we're at 2,949 megabytes a second, right? And 2,811.8 megabytes a second read. If we switch that over to the five gigabyte test, let's see what we get. And we're a little bit lower at about 2000 megabytes per second, right? And 2273 megabytes per second read. So it varies greatly depending on device. Now let's bring in the M1 to show you the speed test there with the disk speed. Now disk speed test is loaded on both the M1 on the left and the M2 on the right. Both of them are set to one gigabyte as far as the stress. And also to be fair, the M1 is actually a two terabyte model where the 512 gigabyte model is with the M2 on the right. So we'll go ahead and start this and see what kind of speeds we're getting. So as far as write speeds, we're getting very similar results, 2,400 or so on the M1 and up to, I saw over 2000 on the M2, now almost 3000 on the M2. So it varies greatly going back and forth, but read speeds are very similar around 2,700 megabytes per second. So pretty good for both of them. I don't think you'll have an issue whether you're editing or anything else with either of them. As far as Geekbench scores, let's go ahead and open that up and open Geekbench 5 and we'll run the regular CPU test and then also a metal benchmark. So we'll go ahead and hit run CPU benchmark and see what we've got. 
Initial benchmarks are done, and on the M1, we have a single core score of 1,754, where on the M2, it's 1,909. As far as the multi-core score, the M1 is 7,739. The multi-core on the M2 is 8,793. So definitely a bump up, but also there's additional encoders in the M2 for video. So that's something you don't get with the M1 that could be super helpful if you're editing video, such as a hardware accelerated H.264, HEVC, ProRes, and ProRes RAW encoder video decode engines and ProRes encode and decode engines, something the M1 doesn't have that's included with the Pro M1 processors and Max processors. So definitely an advantage with the M2. Now let's go ahead and run another test as well. Metal benchmarks have finished and this is a big difference. On the M1 we have 21,613, on the M2 30,893. So quite a big significant jump there, 30% or so. As far as OpenCL, let's run that, and that should conclude the actual Geekbench benchmarks. So we'll go ahead and run OpenCL. With OpenCL, we scored 19,615 on an M1 and 27,841 on the M2. So again, significant jumps in the graphics department. Now, after running those benchmarks, the overall device is nice and cool. The bottom isn't even warm near the vents or anything else. It stayed nice and cool the entire time, so no issues there. And above the touch bar is nice and cool as well. So this is staying nice and cool. And the entire time, it barely used any battery. From the initial setup, we're still at 74 percent initial setup installing those different apps, running the benchmarks, and we're still at 74%. This has a 58.2 watt battery in it. As far as the overall battery life, Apple says it's the same as the M1 at about 20 hours of video playback. This will easily get you through a day, even if you're editing some video or just maybe watching video, checking your email and more. It's incredible how long the battery life is on these. This also includes 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 for wireless capabilities, and of course all of the old Older versions 802.11 a b g n and a c as well as bluetooth 5.0 so pretty much the same as the m1 and this leads me to who is this for and it's really for those that want a touch bar and like the older design so that's really who this is for but i would typically recommend that you wait for the macbook air since that's the new design and we haven't seen much benefit from the fan in the previous generation macbook pro the new macbook air is an all new design and that's typically what i would recommend recommend for anyone that wants a Mac before maybe the next school season starts around the world. So typically this is okay for some users. If you need this style, or maybe you prefer this style, of course it's available now. And again, if you like that touch bar, this is the last Mac with it. I don't think we'll be seeing that again. So let me know if you're going to be picking one of these up so far, it seems super fast and responsive, just like any of the Apple Silicon processors, but let me know if you're picking one up. And if there's anything else you'd like to know about this, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.